Okay, we had to uh, finish our class today before we completed this particular case of Bel Air Apartment Owners versus DLF. So I would like to continue from where we left, but uh, I thought that I will uh, because I will be uploading it, and many students who could not join us for the online lecture, uh, so they might also uh, see this uh, presentation. So I thought that I will give them a brief idea of what this case is all about. So as you can see in this slide, the informant party in this case uh, was uh, the uh, there was an association of Belair owner of of Belair Apartments. So this apartment was located in DLF City Phase Five Gurgaon, and it was constructed by DLF Limited, who is the opposite party number one in this particular case. And the allegation which was brought against them was that they had imposed arbitrary, unfair, and unreasonable condition on the apartment allotees of the housing complex called Belair. Now, the no. next. The, the the specific allegations. So the specific allegations are provided in the slide in front of you. First of all, uh, if you look into the second point, you see that uh, the, the the apartment uh, owners association alleged that there were there were many terms and conditions in the agreement which was completely one sided. And the second thing that they mentioned is the schedule of payment uh, which had. Which was drawn up by DLF was not construction specific initially, so it was not based on uh, uh, construct uh, construction uh, on the construction uh, spec uh, specific. But later, when they decided, so in the initial plan by DLF was that the apartment will have 19 floors. But when they decided to increase the number of floors from 19 to 29, that is when they. Uh, when that is when they made it construction specific that uh, after a point after this particular construction of the apartment is done you have to pay this percentage of the money after that much of construction is done you have to pay this much of money so that was only uh, started unilaterally by them after they decided to increase the number of flows and uh, point number three is very interesting they said that you know uh, since they were the apartment owners so they had to be properly informed and their consultation was required before the LF decided to increase the number of floors. But um, this uh, association was claiming in this uh, in the allegation that they were not consulted at all. And uh, although the number of floors were increased, there was no proportional reduction in the prices to be paid. So the meaning of this is that suppose when you are booking any apartment, you not only pay for the uh, use uh, the livable area or the usable area, but you pay for the common areas like the lobby or any other you know common amenities area. Now uh, the rates which they paid was keeping in mind that. There will be 19 floors, so uh, the common areas were proportionately divided to all these apartment owners of the 19 floors. So the claim of the uh, of the uh, of the complainant in this case is that when the number of floors was increased to 29, so there were 10 more f floors which was built. So it means that now their proportion. Uh, with regard to the common areas become less. So if it has now become less, which it, there should have been a reduction in the money they would be paying to the builder. 19 floors, they, were, they have to pay more. But when 19 floors for the common area, no, 19 from 19 floors, now it become 29, uh, 29 floors, 10 more floors. So they said now the common area, which suppose 19 uh, floors apartment owners were using, now that will be used by 29 floors apartment owners so there should have been some kind of a uh, you know a reduction in the price that they were paying so but the but the apartment a lot a lot is it there was no proportional reduction in the price so they said that the facilities and common areas were compressed due to increase in the number of floors plus of course you can read the other slides also that you know you could not do it without the express consent of the apartment owners and their consent was never taken and they said that proper you know a clearance which was required for the increase in the height also from the safety safety fire safety measures you have to take clearance from specific uh, specific organizations that was also perhaps not taken uh, as was mentioned in the allegation 
so to reply to this uh, the to reply to this the the, the dlf said that uh, they uh, they they were not in a dominant position and they said that if you see as i told you in the previous class also whenever there is any case pertaining to abuse of dominant position you have to not only uh, look into section 4 but you also have to look into section 194 of the competition act which talks about inquiry into abuse of dominant position and when under section 194 certain factors are listed down on uh, what will be looked into by the CCI before declaring um, uh, whether a particular enterprise is in a dominant position or not. And when you refer to section 19 for ABC, it talks about facts like what is the market share of the enterprise against whom allegation has been brought, what is the size and resources of the enterprise, or the third point is what is the size and resources of the competitors of the enterprise etc etc so they were saying that uh, they have to face stiff competition from the competitors who has very large size and resources and because of this factor they could not be said to be in a uh, dominant position also when you refer to 194f of the competition act it talks about dependence of uh, customers on the enterprise as a determining factor for constituting a uh, dominant position. So they said the customers are not dependent on us because the customers can very easily uh, can very easily actually refer to uh, go to any other uh, real estate companies uh, companies um, proposed constructions and they could easily buy apartment from the other competitors. So there, there is no dependence. Uh, of the uh, customers on DLF. So, this was the second point. Plus, 194 uh, h So, 194 h looks into whether this enterprise is creating any kind of a barrier, barriers for new entrants in the market. So, uh, DLF said that they are not creating it because, uh, because there are a lot of new developers coming who is a uh, posing a stiff competition to the old developers like DLF and so they said even the factor under section 194H is not established. So these are some of the very important factors under 194A, B, C, D, F and H. So they said they, this could not be established. So they are, it cannot be said that they are in a dominant position. Now, of course, the matter was referred to uh, by the CCI to the DG because the CCI felt that there was a prime facile case and um, they asked the DG to further investigate the case. The DLF, on the other hand, said the reference to the DG was a completely wrong disorder because they, f as they said they did not fall under Section 4. That is, they, they are not in a dominant position. Now, again, reiterating they are not in a dominant position, they said that there are many real estate companies in entire India, in northern India as well as in national capital region and Gurgaon and all these builders offer a very stiff competition and give competitive offers in the relevant market of the residential apartments. Now they are saying there are hundreds of other builders all over India including NCR. So they, they cannot be held to be in a dominant position. Secondly, they said, uh, <coughs> uh, so uh, as a choice of a residential property which was available, you know, that is not limited in, uh, it is not limited. And apart from DLF's properties, there were a lot of residential properties from where they could easily choose, uh, like DDA, Huda, Noida Development Authority, etc. So because of uh, to these two factors also, you cannot say that DLF is in a dominant position. Uh, the DG's report that we have to consider. The, see, uh, the DG first, you know, as I told you in the last class also, whenever there is any matter pertaining to abuse of dominant position, there are three stages that has to be looked into. First is you have to delineate the relevant market. And then you have to find out whether the alleged enterprise is in a dominant position or not. And of course, then the third stage, whether they have abused their position or not. So what is important is the first stage, that is, what is the relevant market? And as you already know from our regular classes, relevant market constitutes relevant geographic market as well as relevant product market. So here the question is, what would be the relevant geographic market? And will it be the entire India? Will it be Northern India? Will it be NCR? Or will it be Gurgaon? So in case of relevant geographic market, uh, the after looking into the definition in the act, uh, the DG held that Gurgaon will be the relevant geographic market. Since the decision to buy this accommodation in the particular location in Gurgaon, 
is not substitutable with the decision to buy similar apartment in any other geographical location. So when you refer to the definition of relevant geographic market, you see a word homogeneity. So the thing is that you need to have a homogeneous uh, in a similar kind of place where you can find a substitute. So they said that the particular apartment uh, with that we are talking about uh, in terms of location, it cannot easily be substitutable, and you know, uh, and uh, hence the relevant geographic market will be uh, Gurgaon. Now the question is uh, relevant product market. So will it be any any residential apartment? Will it include both average apartments, high end apartments, luxurious apartment? What? Now uh, in this case, this Belair case, uh, it's uh, this Belair apartment is actually a very luxurious apartment which was constructed by DLF. So the relevant product market, the DG said, is very specific. It is not any ordinary apartment building residential building but it is only high-end residential building they said uh, there is no cast iron rule but is high-end but um, it depends on the size uh, size of the apartment it depends on the reputation of the locality characteristic of the neighbors who will be staying around construction quality consumer capacity and willingness to pay so keeping in mind these factors they said the relevant market is high-end residential uh, high-end residential accommodation in Gurgaon to be the relevant market for the purpose of this case. Now the DG looked into whether it can be said that the second stage, whether it can be said that the, the DLF is in a dominant position or it is not in a dominant position. Now as per section 19.4 ABCD which is about market size of the enterprise, size and resources of the enterprise, size and resources of the competitors of the enterprise and number D is economic advantage uh, of the alleged party over the competitors of over the competitors so all these factors uh, the dg looked into and the dg said that dlf definitely have certain distinct economic advantage over the other competitors in the market now uh, the, the second point the uh, dg said that 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 dlf has huge resource in its uh, disposal so it has some 13000 acres of prime land and you know and in one of the presentations if you can see in the third point uh, dlf itself has claimed that it is india's largest real estate company in terms of revenue in terms of earnings in terms of market capitalization and development area and they have a 62 62 year track record of sustained growth customer satisfaction and innovation now the last point uh, the dg said that dlf has been active in since 2000 1946 i'm so sorry and has also the distinction of developing 3000 acres integrated township in gurgaon so this we already know i mean uh, in gurgaon i mean every place you see is dlf dlf this phase dlf that phase so because they have actually developed some 3000 acre integrated township now they're saying that keeping in mind the size of dlf and the scale of operation unitech could be the only comparable comparable player but Unitech not only lags behind sales, assets, market capitalization, income, profit, and overall market share, but in many other aspects as well. Plus, uh, DLS visibility in metro cities is much, much more than that of Unitech. So, so uh, DLF also has a presence in 32 cities in India, and it has a very rich quality land bank. I mean, you know, certain uh, areas of a particular city are earmarked as uh, as uh, as a, as a very good investment spot the others are not that great an investment spot so uh, the ones which are very good investment spot are called uh, rich quality land bank so uh, dlf had a very rich quality land bank with almost 45 percent of the land bank entire one cities in india so definitely looking into all this uh, dg felt that definitely dlf has distinct economic advantages compared to its com com competitors moving on uh, a very important question 194f whether consumers dependent on dlf that's one of the factors to determine abuse of dominant position now now uh, th there's something known as an early mover advantage as and as is mentioned in one of the slides they started operating in 1946 uh, there are many many uh, real estate developers in Gurgaon, but uh, dlf actually acquired the land much earlier and they developed 
it into an integrated township in Gurgaon. So definitely there is an early mover advantage. So suppose there is an area which is not exploited and whoever comes to that particular area to buy land to invest, definitely they 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 would buy the best of the areas, you know. They would have uh, they would buy the best of the areas, they can easily develop that area so in comparison to the other areas you know the area that dlf took up that they developed became the 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 the, the, the portions areas the, the 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 better areas in gurgaon so definitely uh, according to the dg uh, the, uh, the DLF had a uh, early movers advantage they acquired a lot of land they developed integrated township and you know they they also gave a lot of facilities in those integrated township now the thing is that the consumers definitely want to have all those um, developed facilities uh, within the DLF township which is there but then they have to opt for residential units developed and constructed in Gurgaon so in order to access the developed facilities uh, offered by DLF you have to stay within those complexes so definitely you cannot um, shy away from the fact that yes consumers in a way because of the facilities and other things you know uh, and because they developed a particular area much earlier so definitely the consumers uh, wanted to live there uh, wanted to access those facilities and you cannot deny the fact that they were not dependent on the area coming to the important question the third stage has the enterprise abuses dominant position so just being the dominant player is not a problem under the competition law that unless they abuse their dominant position so the question here is uh, did did the uh, you know did DLF abuse its dominant position or why did CCI held that DLF is actually abuse its dominant position? Now this 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 order was definitely against the CCI's decision was against DLF, so they basically asked whether they abused their dominant position or not. The first point you see that the commission uh, observed that DLF unilaterally decided to increase the increase or decrease the super area, so that is. Uh, so at their sole discretion without consulting the LRTs who nevertheless were bound to pay additional amount to accept the reduction in the area. So uh, you know uh, every decision which DLF basically took was without the consultation of the uh, of the LRTs of the apartments and you know uh, they were bound to pay the additional amount to accept the reduction in the area. So they did not have any kind of uh, choice in that particular matter now see the second point i the last portion i have highlight i have highlighted it in bold so you know uh, there is a regulation which says that there may be instances where at the time of actual construction certain minor changes are required to be made in some of the drawing board plans and the building is constructed slightly different from the drawing board plan but it more or less conforms to the drawing board plan so it might so the drawing board which is there it might not be 100% uh, you know proof uh, uh, perfect so there when the actual construction takes place there might be minor alterations in the drawing boards but you know uh, more or less at the end of it it should conform to the drawing plan in a case in in such a case there may be minus say plus minus 2 percent increase or decrease in the uh, super area as well as the, uh, as well as the carpet area of each apartment however when the company decides to substantially change the layout plan uh, which results in more than two percent increase or decrease in super area the allottees consent should be obtained for such changes in the layout plans now there was a massive change in the plan of DLF as we told you already they decided to unilaterally increase 10 floors so this was a huge change so this was done uh, without their consultation and this and the CCI felt that this was definitely a, an abuse that this is a major major change and you did it without consultation and uh, you should have taken the consent of the allottees and not doing is actually an abuse of your dominant position they said uh, and the other thing is that the cci reiterated saying that just a letter from a company that your super area has increased is not sufficient to claim any amount from the allottee so you know just giving a letter and saying uh, and, and informing the allottees is not a proper mechanism uh, to do so 
So this the ne the next slide's first point is important. So suppose you are an LRT of any residential complex. So definitely you have a proportion a proportionate share in the land on on which the uh, the the building is constructed. So you might stay <clears throat> on maybe the 14th floor or the 15th floor. You know, still you have a proportionate share share in the in the land beneath you. Now, uh, uh, so so the thing the land so the thing is the company in so many words stated that the LRT will only have proportionate ownership rights in the land underneath the building. the land which is the fo footprint of the building in which the said apartment is situated similarly the company has unlawfully provided for itself right to further go up in the air by increasing the number of floors and reserving to itself terrace rights so this cci is saying that dlf has unlawfully uh, given itself the right that you can keep on increasing the number of floors on your own whims you know and reserve the terrace rights so an apartment real estate developer developer in the that enterprise cannot reserve to itself the terrace right the terrace rights belongs to the allottees of the residential complex so this is something you cannot take away so this is totally contrary to the law and impositions of of such condition is nothing but abuse of dominant position now the other thing is that uh, in one of the agreement clauses dlf is reserving the right full and absolute right in the community's building sites recreational area sporting activity sites including maintenance of those so this is not right you cannot the a real estate developer cannot retain these kind of exclusive rights to itself it is nothing but it is abusive the last thing which this is with regard to power supply not uh, now uh, they're saying another clause of the agreement is abusive because it gives sole right to dlf regarding arrangement of power supply and the rates levied for the sale of power to the lotties now uh, you cannot take away the lotties association to get competitive offers from other players i hope you know how this procedure works so suppose a builder develops a particular project and you know they, then the lotties definitely buy the project and they start staying so it is expected that after a particular point of time a resident resident uh, welfare association rwa will be formed and till the rwa is formed definitely the builder will keep up the maintenance and look after other things like power supply etc of the apartment but after the residential uh, the resident welfare association uh, they come into force then the company uh, and the, then then the company cannot keep charge of the complex they cannot keep charge of the maintenance power supply etc then you know it will be that rwa who will take responsibilities of the complex and it will have the freedom to, whether to continue with the service providers of powers or other things or to discontinue and engage some other company so the right will be of uh, the rwa so uh, this kind of an agreement where dlf is keeping these kind of rights to itself is nothing but abusive now this next slide is as important now they are talking about lot of instances in which dlf might not be able to complete the project on time so they are saying suppose a uh, strike of workforce a non availability of construction material you know terrorist attack enemy attack act of god certain delay in permissions completion certificate etc so if these kind of incidents happen or due to any kind of government rules orders etc so there then in this particular clause 11 provides that the company shall not be bound by the existing period of deliver delivering such kind of eventualities and it shall have the right to extend the period of delivery of possession so they're saying that if these kind of instances are there then the company shall not be bound so if the company said so the construction started in 2020 and they said we will complete it in 2023 but because of these things if they could not complete it by 2023 so the company is saying we won't be responsible because if if the delay is there because of all these factors now second point is important suppose the company decides to abandon the project so it would be at liberty to cancel the agreement and refund to the lot amount attributable to the agreement now what is this amount attributable to the agreement the lot is association is saying is not clear so anywhere where there is talk of uh, responsibility or liability of dlf nothing is very clear but whenever it talks about uh, it talks about uh, the liabilities of the lotties it's very very strict now that you can see in the very next in, in the third point as well 
Now they're saying that if the company could not deliver possession within three years of execution of the agreement, or if there's an extended period, if they could not do it, the company shall be entitled to terminate the agreement and the company on termination will refund only the amount paid by the apartment and lotteries with 9% simple interest for such period for which it was lying with the company. So this is something that they're self-declaring that this, if this happens, only this much we will give you. However, we have to now look in terms from the perspective of the allottee how strict the agreement was. So you can see in this slide that uh, if the allottees make any kind of delay in payment of the installment, they have to pay the installment after the time is over at 15% interest within first 90 days. And if it is delayed by after 90 days, then they have to pay 18% thereafter. Now, the Commission has observed this trend that while heavy penalties were imposed in the default for, uh, for in the agreement for default of allottees, you know, 15%, 18%, there were insignificant penalties on DLF for its own fault. Like one fault we saw just now, abandoning the project because uh, and they could not complete the project. So, 9% simple interest. Now, the fact is, if they could not pay the installment on time, 15% suddenly, and after 90 days, 18%. When it comes to them, very less, insignificant amount. The company can refuse to condone delay and can cancel the apartment itself if the lottery was prepared to pay interest on delayed payment, which is very interesting. Now, suppose the lottery was not able to pay the installment on proper time and after the delay, etc. So, the company can even refuse or cancel the apartment which was allotted to them. So they kept this kind of an agreement, a clause in the agreement as well. So the company for itself has reserved so many excuses for non-delivery of possession and for scrapping the contract together or for delaying the project. However, when it comes to condoning delay on the part of the lotteries, the company could be charging interest to the tune of 15% and thereafter, you know, 18%. However, for the default of the company, the company, if you see in one instance, is just saying that they will be paying a similar interest of 9%. So these, these kind of clauses makes the makes the agreement very abusive, one-sided, and shows blatant abuse of dominance. The next slide is also equally important. Now, people have put in their hard-earned money, at times their entire savings, to actually buy an apartment and to stay there. Now, keeping in, uh, and they actually invested in this property, keeping in mind the number of flats to come, uh, to, that were supposed to come up. The kind of facilities they'll be given, you know, and the population density. This is very, very important. A lot of people keep the population density in mind whenever they're selecting a project. Because, you know, the population density will also, is directly related to the access of the kind of facilities which will be given. The open green areas are the common facilities and um, the, 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 the CCI is saying you cannot take these away, you know, from the allotties of the apartments. Now, FAR is the common areas which are there in the, uh, in the apartment complex, you know. So, if there is any kind of uh, open area subsequently after the entire project is delivered, so this will belong to the allottees to the apartment allottees that it will no longer with, be with the company and if suppose they want to make an additional some kind of a recreational area it will be decided by the allottees association the residential the resident welfare association whether they want to put up some additional construction or not again i'm repeating once the company has utilized whatever open space is there the relevant time in respect of the land over which the complex is to be developed any subsequent increase in the free area would belong to the allottees and not the company. And later on, only the Resident Welfare Association will take a decision if they want to put up any additional construction. And the, the, the DLF or any other real estate company will not have a right to the open area within the residential complex. They cannot make any kind of additional construction. Now, the last point is also important. The terms of the agreement when they entered into was never fully shown to them during the booking of the apartment. So, these terms and conditions were prepared and framed by the company unilaterally without consulting 
the buyers. Now, once the company had already received considerable amount from the applicant buyers, this agreement was forced upon the allottees. And obviously, after they have paid a significant amount of money, but they had no option but to sign the agreement, as otherwise the agreement provided for heavy penalties and deduction from the money already deposited by the allottees with the company, which it in itself was an abuse of dominance. So this is also a very important point. So uh, with this, you can see how the CCI, how the CCI actually held that DLF was not only the dominant player, but it it has also violated Section Four of the Competition Act because it has abused its dominant position and uh, and the factors which the CCI looked into it was just presented to you uh, just now. I think we remember that there was a discussion today on in the online lecture about you know uh, how to delineate the relevant market and there was a discussion why you know high end residential accommodation in Gurgaon was considered to be the relevant market not any other you know not any other uh, and the uh, delineation of uh, relevant market was not considered to be northern India or NCR etc. Now I told you that with regard to delineation of relevant market in case of real estate you know there has been a lot of controversies and in many cases uh, it has been mentioned by authors that uh, the, the the CCI has been wrong in uh, delineating the relevant market and they and they should not have done it also I have to, I told you the practical problems suppose in case of high-end accommodation in this particular case you saw that uh, DLF was considered to be the dominant player now suppose another set of allotees of super tech in Gurgaon with regard to luxury apartments comes and say that they have abused their dominant position then the matter will cannot be taken up by CCI because or even if it is taken up by CCI the argument of the lawyer of Supertech would be that in that case of Belair Owners Apartment Association you have already said that DLF is the dominant player so if if uh, DLF is the dominant player how can you consider that Supertech is the dominant player in the market so these kind of problems uh, about delineation of relevant market keeps on coming again and again before the CCI and you know uh, you can see in front of the slide I have talked to, I have mentioned two articles which you can read and uh, try to understand uh, the problems that I just mentioned about CCI's various decisions in real estate market especially with regard to delineation of the relevant market.